Hi everybody, welcome back. Another episode of On the Road with the Fish Guy. All right, today's episode is probably gonna be our most controversial yet. This is a subject that comes up on forums and Facebook groups, and it's probably one of the most heated topics that I see on there. People are ready to go down swinging for this, and uh, I have a feeling what I'm going to say in this video is going to make some of their heads explode. So, without further ado, today's episode. How fast can you cycle a reef tank? If you were to believe some of these folks online, it will take you four to six months to cycle a tank with a dead shrimp to start and completely dead base rock with no life on it whatsoever. You, you gotta start with just barren desert, nothing in there. And then you wait and you wait and you wait some more and you put a couple fish in and you wait another month and you know maybe in six months you can think about adding a coral but you're out of your mind if you're gonna put anything in in the first couple of months whoa wow what are you thinking okay well back to reality for a minute um in my line of work i have clients that don't want to wait six months to have a beautiful, fully stocked reef tank. So over the years, I've gotten good at making that happen as quickly as possible, as safely as possible. Now, obviously, priority one is we don't want to kill anything. We don't want any fish to go in there that are sacrificial fish. We don't want to waste any life whatsoever if we can help it through what we're doing. Okay, so... How long does it really take? I've set up a fully stocked reef tank. That means maximum fish capacity of what we're gonna do for the tank and close to full on corals. Obviously you have to leave some room because they're gonna grow. Okay, I've done this in as little as two months, start to finish. And I know right now a lot of people are just losing their mind. Okay, well, it can be done. Are you gonna pay more to do it? Absolutely. Is it gonna be a little more tricky? Yes. Okay, you really have to pay attention to feeding. That's a big thing that people get messed up on. You know, they, they stock it lightly, but then they feed like it's Thanksgiving dinner every single meal. Well, that's just as bad as having way too many fish. You can't overdo the feeding. That's, that's a, a big no-no when you're trying to get a tank going as fast as possible and minimize the risk. Okay, so how do I do it? Well, good quality cured live rock. Everybody's heard the term cured live rock and everybody's definition is a little bit different. What do I mean by cured live rock? I mean that somebody else, or if you're the one doing it, that's fine too, but has taken live rock, they've ordered live rock in, usually they come in like 50 pound boxes, they're nasty, they're stinky, they got a lot of life on it, but a lot of that life is also gonna die. So, you have to cook it, basically cure it. So you have vats or tanks or barrels or totes or whatever you use with salt water, with circulation, with a heater, and you have to go through a curing process so that all of that extra stuff that's gonna die comes off. And during this process, you have to take it out, you gotta scrub a lot of that off, you're doing 100% water changes. You can't do this in the aquarium that you're setting up, you just can't. The organics that come off will extend this process for potentially a month or two because it takes so long for the tank to, to cycle through those organics. So ideally, you're already buying cured rock None of this die off. You're buying it local so you can, you know, take it from the store or another reefer or someone like myself, uh, you know, does a maintenance business that, you know, you're getting good quality live rock. You're not having any die off. It's like taking a hang off the back filter or a canister filter off of one tank and putting it on the other. There's no cycling. You just literally put it on the new tank and all that biological activity that eats ammonia, that eats nitrite, is already there. You don't have to wait for it to get sped up. It's just, it's already ready to go, ready to work for you. So that is a big one. All right, so you get, and 
roughly a pound per gallon. That's usually what I recommend. It depends on the density of the rock. If you get super dense rock, uh, you don't need quite as many pounds. Uh, or other way around, sorry. Super dense rock, you need a few more pounds because it doesn't have enough volume. The porous rock, this you you know it goes for farther meaning you have you can build a big enough uh, uh, rock structure uh, out of less poundage uh, but you're still getting all that porosity that has all your uh, nooks and crannies for the good bacteria sorry I stumbled there for a bit all right so live rock good cured quality live rock there's step one if you're doing a sand bed they offer live sands, but generally you have to rinse the sand and get all the dust and debris out of it anyway, and I do highly suggest that. So live sand, I, I don't really suggest it unless you have a place local to you that sells live sand out of a tank that's already pre-cleaned, ready to go, which you don't really see that too often. So uh, dead sand is fine, and just rinse the hell out of it. Um, you will still get algae blooms, and especially with a sand bed. I found that sand itself can create diatom blooms. I've had tanks that have cycled with a bare bottom, and then the owner decided they wanted to put sand in afterward. We put the sand in, and in less than a week we had a diatom bloom, even with really well-rinsed sand. So the better you rinse it, the better the tank's going to look that much sooner. All right, so you got your sand bed. Uh, filtration is key, obviously. If you're doing a reef tank, you're not doing a standard filter in that sense. You know, an appropriately sized skimmer. You got your mechanical filtration, uh, usually done in the way of filter socks, uh, things like that. Have all that up and ready to go. Things like bio pellets reactors and GFO reactors, not really a good idea right from the get-go. Um, you shouldn't really be having any nitrate or phosphate issues within the first three months, give or take. So, you know, you don't need to focus on those. Those don't need to be on day one. So there's your filtration. Water. If you can pull water out of an established tank, that would be ideal. You know, you go to your LFS and, you know, they have nice tanks. And, you know, if you ask them, hey, could I get a couple of buckets out of one of your reef tanks? And, you know, if you have to pay, pay them for it, great. You know, what are your buying premixed salt water or buying water out of their reef tank? I don't think it really is going to matter to them. So, and the reason for that is you're getting a lot of beneficial life in that as well, whether it be some uh, good bacteria or free floating little critters that are in the water, what have you. Uh, Getting water from an established tank will help you get up set up that much faster. Okay, so water. Next step, a bacteria product. Insert your flavor of choice bacteria product here. I've used Dr. Tim's in the past. I've been happy with it. It's, it's a good product. And uh, any of them, I mean, read the reviews. You know, I'm sure everybody in the brother has their own favorite. Uh, for me, it was Dr. Tim's. That's the one I found that, to work the best. So Dr. Tim's for a bacteria product. After that, add some fish. Don't go crazy. You know, first fish in there. If you have an interest in doing clownfish, throw some clowns in there. Uh, there's a lot of good hardy fish that don't really have much in the wear of, in the way of care and upkeep meaning you don't have to feed them three times a day they don't have a special diet they're not terribly finicky right off the bat uh, fish in that bracket royal gramas tend to be pretty good I don't usually recommend damsels or chromis they, they tend to be jerks people end up wanting to rip them out uh, after the first few months because they're they're picking on the nice fish that they actually like so and again, we're here on wonderful back roads of New Hampshire with all these wonderful frosties, which I love so much. Hold that thought. Okay, back again after our uh, frost heave break uh, on to better roads. So, like I was saying, uh, damsels, chromis, don't usually suggest them. Uh, they tend to be bullies, uh, bother the nice fish that we like in the long run to have in the tank. So, get your starter fish in there. Over the course of the next month, build up to what you're going to have for fish. I would probably not suggest putting in tangs or angels or anything delicate or high maintenance if you're new to the hobby. 
it can be done if you're more advanced and you've had some practice with those fish but if you're new save yourself the extra headache and uh, you know skip the high demand fish for now and uh, that way there again you're not trying to feed them and feed them and they're finicky fish and they're not eating etc that you know again the food is really critical because that's really what dictates how bad ammonia spikes are how bad nitrate spikes are if anything at all because again we used an established filter with nice cured live rock so if you're slowly building up over the course of this month you shouldn't really see any spikes whatsoever and if they are there they're going to be minimal and leave very quickly so there's your fish over the course of a month you work up to your fish after that you can start thinking about corals now during this two month period you are going to monitor your water parameters and do water changes if necessary don't get too hung up on the fact that you might have a brown algae diatom bloom, that you might have some green algae blooms. This is all a normal part of the process of the tank cycling. And like I said, the sand bed really plays a part in this whole diatom bloom, uh, the brown algae, sorry. Um, cleanup crew, during this time, it is great, right from day one even, to add hermit crabs, the nice little reef hermits, whether you do the Mexican red legs, which are the small red ones, or the blue legs, or again, whatever your flavor of choice is. I would put in, from the get-go, one per gallon. That is a great starting point for your hermit crabs, and that's ideally what you wanna shoot for long-term anyway. So getting those in there, they minimize the algae blooms, they clean up any waste or excess food, and it's something that really people forget about when they're first setting up a tank. The hermit crabs are, or any of the cleanup crew is an afterthought because they're so focused on the fish and cycling the tank, they, they completely forget, oh, those little guys eat food and waste too. Ah, see, there you go. That helps with cycling the tank and making sure that you uh, get all that extra food and waste out of there. Uh, it, it, it could just break down and lead to water quality issues. So cleanup crew, great right from the get-go. Uh, your corals. If you're gonna start with corals, I would start with some of the basics. Don't feel that you have to do the super, super basic ones. Uh, get an idea for what you like for corals and what you think you're gonna do. And uh, within that group, figure out what are the easiest to care for. Obviously, softies are the best. Uh, in the softies, mushrooms are probably about as easy as it gets. Uh, you have tree corals, things like Kenya trees. Uh, there's some colorful versions of uh, that are very similar, any of those finger leathers. Some people like them, some people don't, and that's fine. Again, pick what you like that's easy to care for. Uh, LPS and SPS, there's certain species of both which tend to be kind of easy. Monoporas and the SPS are probably the easiest ones you can keep. Um, if you're new to the hobby, probably want to wait on SPS until, again, you have some time under your belt and you're familiar with the, the tank and maintenance and all that good stuff. But by the end of two months, you can have your fish list in there and you can have a close to fully stocked corals in those two months. It can be done. I've done it many, many times before. So don't let the internet haters tell you you can't do it or that you're out of your mind for wanting to do it fast. That's the thing I, I don't get. Somebody says, hey, is there any way I can do the cycling process better or make it a little faster? And immediately they're just slapped in the face. No, no you can't. You're not gonna do it fast. Uh, you're wrong for thinking that you should do it any faster. You should just get out of the hobby right now. And it's just time and again and again and I see that and I'm just, I'm confused that why, why does it have to be that way? It, it doesn't, it, but that's what everybody wants to make you believe. Well, I'm uh, the fish guy is here to tell you different. Um, I, I don't have any physical, tangible proof to, to show you on this video. Um, you know, you can check out my website and check out a lot of the tanks I've built. Uh, you know, I've got tank videos on here. <laughs> I, I don't know how else to, to tell you uh, that, hey, it can be done, but you know, just look and read and uh, a little common sense will tell you if, you're, if you've been in fish tanks before, the, the most critical thing of this whole process is established filtration. Take a filter off of one tank, put it on the other, no cycling. 
So that's what you do with your cured live rock. Thanks for watching today, guys. Thanks for sticking with me. I know this one was a little bit of a long one. Um, hopefully, I didn't offend any subscribers that are of the dead shrimp barren desert cycling camp. Uh, if I did, I apologize. Um, I'm just here to try to offer some information about uh, another way to, to go about thinking about cycling a tank. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good one.